check this out, folks. An interesting sunrise. It's a sunrise like no other. Perfect for the chase of a train like no other. We're in Pompano Beach, turning north on Dixie Highway, following the FEC mainline in search of FEC train 960, the Pompano Market Switcher. The 960 originates out of Fort Lauderdale Yard on the Florida East Coast Railway and works north as far as Boca Raton, Florida, but the majority of the customers are located in Pompano Beach proper. Right now the train is about to work its first customer, which is Newcore Steel, served on the East Main. Um, this will put it across Sample Road. The north end of the train will stick out past the switch and the south end of the train will work it. They have engines on both sides to optimize operations. This optimization, which saves the train's need to run itself around several times, is one of two major changes that have been implemented to 960's operating pattern ever since Brightline started. The second change, which is much more subtle in this video, is the fact that the train is running pretty much very early in the morning and that is for obvious reasons to avoid interfering with rush hour service. But since Brightline is not operating due to COVID-19, the train can run generally more into the day now. Nucor, which is a known steel producer, takes in rebar and other metal loads here at Pompano Beach for distribution. But much like several of the other customers in the Pompano market, as interesting as they are, seeing the train actually switch into the facility is very difficult. In this case, it's because 960's cars are actually blocking the view. The best we can really do is compile a bunch of shots over at Sample Road. has a habit of saying that because he's a UM. He's a UM alum. <clears throat> the switching is pretty standard. Pull the empties out, which are ready, back them onto the train, grab the loads, set off the loads on a lead track, not necessarily in a spot, couple the engine back to the train and head south. Leads the west and then back north into the market. It is finally at this point where I link up with, off camera, my friend Richard, known on YouTube as FEC Rail Fanning and FLL Aviation. Feel free to subscribe to both of his channels. Now that the train has finished its work at Newcore, they are going to be pulling south to the Pompano Interlocking where they will cross over to the West Track and onto the Pompano Market Freight Lead in order to head into the Spur. And yes, I had to turn the volume down to combat that squeaking noise which is most likely I would say a stuck brake maybe?
The Pompano Market Spur is a pretty unique stretch of FEC track. Still largely jointed, still 10 mile an hour, no quiet zone, running through residential Pompano Beach. And this is a very cool spot that Richard took me to. The line will eventually cross under I-95 and come very close to the South Florida Rail Corridor, where FEC works about five customers. But before we see the switching action on the end of the spur, let's have a little break and catch FEC train 121 southbound from Jacksonville to Miami. This catch was particularly important as we were tracking whether FEC was going to reinstate train 109, which as you can see the normal freight block that it has, which is empty rock and manifest, was tacked onto the top of this train, so not today. Alright guys, so back to work on this local. It is headed to this customer, Matco Industries, a large transloading facility that handles just about any dry commodity that you can name. Parallel to it is also a scrap metal loader on behalf of Trademark Metals. What's really neat about this area is that it is so close to the South Florida Rail Corridor that we can quickly head out and catch Amtrak 98 on the fly, northbound Silver Meteor. Matco Industries has several tracks where 960 has to carefully switch in order to get the right cars to the right places. With relation to the catches from earlier this morning, the quick line loads for Matco are sitting behind the view of the train on another track. The plastic load for Isoflex is right next to me. The empties from Nucor are behind that plastics load. Now the 434 is going to be shuffling a number of cars at Matco that have already been spotted. And judging by the springs on the trucks, they appear to be a mix of loads and empties, the empties of which may not have been released back to the railroad. In case you were wondering, hopping on or off the slow moving equipment is not really as scary or as dangerous as it may seem. For example, if you've been to a Disney park, you do it anyhow on rides like Spaceship Earth, Journey into Imagination, Seas with Nemo and Friends as they have moving guide rails that you have to adjust your speed to.
There's steel ties here, I see. In some places. Now with that already placed cut, 960 is backing onto the fresh set of loads that are to be placed. Think of this like first in, first out sorting in retail. From one of the tracks on the west side of the customer, the 434 grabbed those two empty quicklime cars and now is proceeding to set off a fresh cut of loads for that same track. A note to all the model railroaders out there, capturing the quick lime rail car operation is not too difficult. You could get a Pullman Standard 4750 from just about any manufacturer, or a Scale Trains Gunnerson covered hopper, do the necessary weathering, re-lettering, and there you have it, you'll be done and all set and ready to haul quick lime. In the model world, of course. On the trademark side? Yeah. I mean, this 434 is a good license. Oh, this is cool. He's only pulling one car out. That was all loads. Yeah, Richard and I are bickering about the locomotives and which one has the cooler paint scheme. But anyhow, that one car that the 434 is leaving Matco with is going to be going to Isoflex. But the whole train is going to be solid when that move is done.
You're going to be seeing the train slow down so the conductor can get out and hand throw the switch onto the northern lead. I'll bring up the map to remind you of what the track layout is like. Unfortunately, Isoflex and the industries to the north are not really easy to access. So we're going to be waiting at the Northwest 15th Street grade crossing and wait pretty much until the train is ready to come back south. Now at this point we are done focusing on the industrial operations of train 960 and getting a couple more mainline and spur mainline shots of the train as it heads back to Fort Lauderdale Yard. Shout out to East Coast Nick, the engineer on this train. So the last catch of train 960, but not necessarily the last catch of the day, is here in Pompano on the FEC main line. But stay tuned, I've got more coming, and if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe to this channel. From Pompano Beach, Florida, thank you for watching, hope you have enjoyed it. This is TE, out.